Welcome everyone. Welcome Empowerment Techniques Design Approaches. Uh, in that specific lecture, we will mainly talk about the uh, about the comprehensive approach that how we can design uh, the payment uh, according to the layered system. So basically, the when we talk about the payment techniques design, it is referring it to the uh, determination of the thickness of various payment layer. Uh, for a given style condition and uh, to predict the design traffic in terms of ESAL uh, equivalent standard Excel load which should provide the desired structural as well as the functional performance or the selected payment design like. Uh, in that specific lecture we will uh, try to explain the different design uh, approaches such as uh, empirical procedure, mechanistic uh, empirical procedure and uh, as to design. So coming towards very first lecture, uh, very first topic is about the what type of different thickness design uh, approaches do we have. So we have uh, the number one is about uh, empirical procedure while the second one is about mechanistic uh, empirical procedure. Empirical procedure is actually uh, the way through uh, through which we uh, is a process through which the testing of a hypothesis are using empirical uh, evidence direct or indirect and uh, observation in experience related work is basically uh, related to the uh, uh, empirical uh, method or like design but when we talk about mechanistic uh, empirical so mechanistic approach is basically seek to explain phenomena through reference to the uh, physical causes. So mechanistic payment design simply means that a model is used to calculate the reaction of the payment to the traffic load which are acting on it. So parameters which is used to uh, determine such as uh, deflection, stresses and strain which is a result from the input parameter from the uh, imposed on the uh, supporting layer from the uh, input parameter. So the input parameter which is basically needed to determine uh, the stresses, strain and deflection and mechanistic uh, empirical method, uh, the important parameters such as uh, uh, contact pressure, wheel load, uh, axle uh, configuration, moving load and repetition of load etc are considered. Uh, in more detail, if we talk about the uh, empirical procedure method, so empirical procedure may only accurate for the exact condition for which it is developed or maybe it is uh, also considered kind of an invalid if we apply it uh, according to the different variables in their development. So empirical procedure maybe is not valid uh, if we apply it uh, outside of those variables uh, for which it is already built or developed. So uh, the most important indicator which are considered in the uh, empirical procedure ne number one is the uh, payment thickness that how much each and every layer have. The second one is about the number of load application required to cause failure. So we also try to determine the uh, uh, relative damage factor between repetition of the load versus uh, failure. We also try to determine that which type of stresses are predicted um, or uh, expected to be in the pavement uh, supporting layer as well as in the uh, top layer as well. We also try to identify the type of a subgrade material which should be used such as uh, grade A, B, C, D uh, and etc. We also consider the different type of a climate variation condition as well as the uh, traffic condition. <coughs> the next one is about when we compare the mechanistic empirical procedure. So this procedure basically uh, applies and it have two parts. The number first is about that the mechanistic part in which a structural model theory is used to calculate stresses, strain and deflection which are induced from the traffic in 
environmental condition. But when we talk about the uh, empirical part, the empirical part in which uh, distresses model are used to predict the future performance of the pavement structure. So the stresses model are developed are kind of a typical developed from the laboratory data and again it is uh, calibrated with the field data as well. So basically it is a combination of a mechanistic as well as uh, empirical procedure. But when we talk about mechanistic uh, empirical method, so when we try to combine both of them together, so mechanistic empirical method of is a is a based on the kind of a mechanics of material, which basically uh, related to the uh, input variable uh, as well as the output, uh, like kind of a output uh, variable as well. So the input variable such as wheel load while the output uh, are like the uh, output variables such as stresses uh, and strain so like the response values are basically used to predict different type of uh, stresses at the laboratory as well as from the field data as well uh, <clears throat> if we if we more to, if we uh, try to understand it more in a kind of a uh, detailed way so mechanistic empirical design require more long term as well as the short term uh, data so when we talk about the short term and long term data so the different type of a uh, parameters uh, need to be considered such as uh, different type of a vehicle uh, different type of a pavement uh, like uh, response calculation from following weight uh, deflectometer uh, system and also to uh, analyze stresses and what is the uh, design thickness and uh, uh, so on so like it is completely based on the lab test as well as on the uh, database uh, like uh, preparation as well but when we talk about the different type of benefits of uh, mechanistic uh, empirical method so uh, like the only drawback in empirical method that it was completely based on the field data in as well as on the uh, observation when we merge it with the uh, mechanistic so mechanistic was more detailed so but uh, according to different type of a researcher when we merge both data together so what type of a uh, benefits or uh, kind of a advantages we can get is a pavement uh, expert so different type of a research assumed that mechanistic uh, empirical method which which is also called me uh, design approach uh, have the uh, ability or tendency to model and analyze the pavement accurately we can also uh, it also give us the uh, flexibility to predict different type of stresses at different level <clears throat> it also give us the uh, kind of a uh, dependency the stresses and strain dependency uh, for both subgrade and base course layer as well uh, it have only one drawback the main drawback of uh, mechanistic uh, empirical method that it need more comprehensive and sophisticated data. When we talk about comprehensive data, so we basically referring it to the kind of a uh, uh, data type which should be complete, which should be meaningful, uh, which should be like kind of a uh, readable and uh, understandable. But when we talk about uh, sophisticated, uh, sophisticated data so the, the sophisticated data it means that uh, the data which is received from the field it should be more reliable so like uh, uh, like each and every data which is received from the deed uh, from the field it should be validated as well as the uh, calibrated as well so this is the only one drawback of mechanistic uh, empirical method that we need more uh, sophisticated and uh, comprehensive data which is kind of a very hard and uh, it is also a kind of a probability that our uh, expenses may be increased by three to four times so before to go in a very detail uh, the aim of the design is to to uh, to design a pavement through which we can carry a load and uh, we can divide and distribute the load from the top to the uh, subgrade layer and also it should provide the uh, reliability uh, to the vehicles as well as to the uh, people as well 
So the purpose of the R2 is number uh, very one, the so that we can uh, model and design for the dynamic repetitive load when we have a different magnitude and uh, different uh, arrangements such as uh, uh, tandem axle, tri axle, and so on. And also the purpose, the second purpose is to uh, determine the uh, different thickness of the uh, pavement layer as well. And then uh, also to nominate or to specify uh, the quality of material through which we can achieve the specific loading condition or the uh, design or the life of the uh, pavement such as material uh, rigidity and stiffness and so on. So before to go in a very detail, uh, those are the uh, design consideration which we need to consider such as uh, pavement performance and uh, which we usually try to understand that what is the structural and functional performance of the uh, pavement such as uh, in structure we usually consider cracking and faulting and uh, uh, deterioration while in the function we uh, try to understand the uh, riding quality comfort uh, which we usually consider in term of the roughness. While the next one is uh, traffic consideration. So in Arsto traffic is considered in terms of uh, ESAL uh, equivalent single uh, axle load. Uh, at this stage we must assume the uh, structural number. So we must check if the if the final uh, SN is similar to the uh, assume. So if we have the higher uh, structural numbers which means uh, we have the uh, stronger pavement. And if we have the uh, lower structural number that means that the pavement is uh, less stronger or it life will be little bit less as compared to the uh, as compared to the uh, the one which structural number is higher. Uh, similarly, we have the material of construction. Uh, so, like what type of material is actually needed in the uh, top layer as well as in the uh, lower layer. We have the roadbed soil condition. Uh, means uh, such as uh, uh, roadbed soil condition is basically uh, referring it towards the uh, subgrade material uh, which performance or value or uh, parameters we uh, nominate with CBR value, resistance value and modulus of uh, resilient. Okay? And then we have the uh, environmental consideration and uh, drainage condition as well in which we usually consider uh, the uh, the kind of uh, data that how much capacity of that specific pavement have to drain off all the uh, water such as rain, uh, snow, etc. and so on. And then we have uh, reliability and then life cycle cost and then uh, shoulder design and so on. So first of all we will try to understand each and every step which is used for the uh, Arshto pavement analysis method. The very first method, the very first uh, step is uh, to design the fixed design period. Okay, so that means that uh, the pavement age is uh, completely based on the loading material, rigidity, stiffness, and pavement thickness. So on the basis of all those parameter, we assume the uh, design period that that uh, that for example this is the uh, service life of that of that specific type of the uh, pavement second one is uh, w18 which is also called the uh, estimate design traffic so an axle load is carrying of 18 caps and causing a damage uh, effect of uh, unity is known as a standard uh, axle load which is uh, denoted with uh, w18 uh, in the coming slide, we will also try to uh, to understand that how we can count uh, different type of a uh, traffic where we also consider the average daily traffic, uh, average volume and so on. Okay. The third step is to uh, analyze the uh, ZR. So ZR is basically used for the normal deviation for, to compare the pavement uh, different type of material condition. And then fourth one, we have the delta PSI, which is basically used for the uh, like to understand 
the ability of the pavement to um, serve the traffic for for which it is uh, designed when we talk about service uh, ability it actually refer to the uh, ability of the pavement to serve the traffic for a period of for, for a specific period of a uh, time uh, when we talk about the ashto method uh, when we talk about the uh, service uh, ability so we have different type of conditions such as uh, as you can see here we have the uh, two value one is called psi initial and another one is called psi terminal okay so initial is actually the value when the pavement were freshly built or constructed so it is uh, in the next slide the uh, the chart is actually mentioned so uh, the fresh pavement uh, initial service uh, ability is almost between 4.5 to 5 but when we talk about the psi uh, terminal terminal means when pavement were used for for the, uh, for a few year of time and uh, it uh, level were actually went down and it need rehabilitation or to elevate the level so that uh, the it should also work for a few more years that psi terminal value is actually uh, based on the field observation from the different traffic and pavement the fourth the uh, fifth one is uh, to evaluate the modulus of resilient and uh, cbr value uh, from the field according to the ashto road test while the sixth one is to determine the uh, layer coefficient for uh, each and uh, every one such as base sub base and uh, subgrade similarly for the uh, drainage coefficient as well <clears throat> and then we can determine and then we can uh, resolve the ashto equation by putting all those values and then we can uh, determine the uh, thickness and then compare it with different graph table uh, and so on 